right, good morning. Get this set up. Thursday. Hope you guys are doing well. A few announcements. Um, I did put exam 17 1 through 17 3 on Zangle. So it is on Zangle. Uh, also, exam 18 1 is going to be given on Friday at 2 30, and it will include what I'm teaching today. So hopefully, you've done everything up to this point. Um, I have a couple more things to teach, which, which will also be included on that test on Friday at 2.30. Uh, lesson 18 one is due Friday at 9 p.m. And um, I have put the summer packets um, in Zangle. Uh, the summer packets will rate, if you did it, it will raise your grade 2%. So if you have a 79%, it'll raise it to an 81%. If you have an 89%, it'll raise it to a 91%. So, um, I don't know if I said that the same way or not. Uh, anyhow, um, yeah, so please don't ask me to turn in the summer packet. Um, that should have already been done. So, if you have not turned in the summer packet, you need to meet with me um, because I need to know why you didn't turn it in or why I'm getting it now or whatever else. So, uh, anyhow, please, please don't ask me to turn in the summer packet. Um, unless you make a meeting with me to let me know why you didn't turn it in earlier or why you're turning it in now. Um, I do want to say uh, uh, for those of you who, if, if you are having a hard time at home right now, if your parents aren't working and you're having to work or uh, things are just hard at home, I'm not talking to you. But for everyone else who just didn't take this exam, uh, the the uh, one from yesterday, or you're just messing around. Let me just let you know that you are not ready for college. Um, because with all this, this is the type of free time you're going to have in college. And if you can't be self motivated and self disciplined now, you're not ready for college. So hopefully in the next year or two, um, you will be able to be more accountable to yourself. You'll be more responsible in doing your work because. Uh, what you have to do, life's always going to be hard. Uh, what you have to do is be able to separate your academic life from your home life. Um, you must be able to do that. You must be able to do both. So you must be able to live your life at home. You must be able to do your academics. If you're not able to do that, you will not be successful in college. Um, so anyhow, I, I am disappointed in those of you who are just being lazy and, and not doing your work. Because this distance learning may be going on for next year. So if you haven't been practicing, if you haven't been diligently attending meetings, you know, doing assignments, then you're not even going to be ready to go for next year. So um, anyhow, uh, my mom always taught me, and I think um, one of the most important lessons I could have taught you this year is to finish what you start. So whenever you start something, you want to finish it. And so those of you who did well on the test, congratulations. Um, those of you who did well on the test, you guys are the ones that have been asking all the questions. You're the ones that are coming to the workshops. You're the ones that have had, had me do things on Saturday. So um, you can definitely see, you know, who's working and, and who's not. So, so anyhow. All right, so let's get started here. Um, in lesson 18, one, we've been talking about graphing sine and cosine. Those are the main things. Um, I did not teach it like the book. Um, hopefully you've gone through the um, evaluate online because that's what the exam will look like. You can also tell who's doing the online work and who's not. Uh, the people who are doing the online work are familiarizing themselves with the way the test looks. Um, those of you who are not doing the online work, you're, you're not getting the problems right. So anyhow, make sure you know how to graph sine and cosine the way I taught it, find the amplitude, Find the period. The period is going to be important on this test. So remember the period for the parent cosine and sine is two pi. Um, the period changes by having B some, being some other number that other than one. So if B is some other number, you must calculate the period because let's say the period changes to pi. That means you're going to see one cycle in pi radians. 
let's say the period changes to 10 pi, you're gonna see one cycle in 10 pi radians. So the period is very important. Um, so make sure you understand period and that you know that whatever the period is, is where you see one cycle. So today what I wanna talk about is I wanna talk about some modeling with sine and cosine. I specifically wanna talk about frequency and then I'm gonna talk about secant and cosecant, uh, which is pretty simple. If you know how to graph sine and cosine, secant and cosecant are not gonna be hard because you have to be able to graph sine and cosine in order to do secant and cosecant. So, all right, let's get started here. So this is, um, it's actually explained six, which is objective six. So let me just write some stuff down. Mariana, can you see the screen okay? All right. So sine and cosine functions can be used in real life to model phenomena such as sound waves. Uh, this is only one little example. It could be it could be used to model a lot more than that. You may have been at, at, at the hospital where you've seen those machines that are showing something that looks like a sine wave. Um, yeah. So you you see this throughout various things in real life. So in this case, different sounds create different waves. All right, so we're looking specifically at sound waves and, and what I'm saying here is different sounds create different waves. All right, so one way to distinguish sounds is to measure frequency. All right, so I'm gonna put the definition over here. So frequency is the number of cycles in a given unit of time. Okay, so frequency is the number of cycles in a given unit of time, and here's the definition. Frequency is equal to one over the period. So basically, one over the period is the reciprocal. I'll show you what I mean. Just You don't need to write this down, just watch this. Let's say your period is two, let's say. The frequency, and by the definition, would be one over two, which is just the reciprocal of the period. So let's say the period was one, four. By definition, one divided by one, four, which is, remember what I said about one over a, a fraction is the reciprocal? So one divided by one fourth is one times four, which is four. 
So I'm just letting you know that even though the, the definition is one over the period, if you want to do it that way, I'm just straight out telling you that the, the frequency is the reciprocal of the period. So if the period was two thirds, the frequency would be three halves. If the period was seven, the, the frequency would be one seventh. Frequency is just the reciprocal. Now, some people think that the reciprocal, you change the signs. You do not change the signs with the reciprocal. So if something's positive, you do not change it to a negative. It doesn't, doesn't work that way. A reciprocal is, um, is you don't change the signs. Okay, now I want to write something else here. Um, Hertz, H-E-R-T-Z, and it's abbreviated H-Z, that's the standard measure of frequency. Okay, so frequency is the reciprocal of the period and the standard measure of frequency is denoted by Hertz, which is abbreviated HZ. All right, I'm gonna erase this. But it's only going to erase. Okay. So you want to look at an example on page 879. A. All right. So um, I'm just going to write down the directions here. It says graph each function. Find its frequency. And then it says, what do the frequency amplitude and period represent in the context of the problem. So they want you to graph and find the frequency. What do the frequency, the amplitude, and the period represent in the context of the real life problem? All right, I'm going to read the problem on page 879A. All right, it's a physics problem. All right, and it says this use a sine function to graph a sound wave with a period of 0 0.004 seconds and an amplitude of four pascals. And you can look up Pascal um, on, your, on your phone to find out what that is, but that's also a measurement. So let me write this down. So they're saying the amplitude is four pascals. And they're saying the period is 0 0.004 seconds. Notice they didn't give us the frequency. So the first thing we want to do is find the frequency. So the frequency is one over the period. 
So wouldn't it be one over point zero zero four? And then that's going to be in Hertz. So can somebody do me a favor and put this on the calculator and then unmute yourself and tell me what you get. So what's one divided by 0 0.004? 250. Yep. 250 hertz. H Z. So real simple. That's why if you're wondering, you know, how, how can she teach us on Thursday? She's going to test us on Friday because this stuff is going to be simple. So this should be something that's not going to take a lot of studying or anything else. I mean, it's going to be some pretty straightforward stuff. All right, so that's one of the answers because they did ask for the frequency. We haven't done the graph yet. So. We're going to do the graph just like we did the other graphs. We just need to figure out how we want to count. Now, remember the period is the time, right? So I'm not going to count by one, two, three, four. I'm going to count more like point. 0, 0, 001.002.003.004, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, right? So I'm looking at this number. So the way I'm going to count is every tick mark, I'm going to count by twos. So 0 0.002, 0 0.004, 0 0.006. Maybe not. I don't like that. It's two scrunched together. So, because my period is right here, it's two scrunched together. So, I changed my mind. I'm not going to count by 0 0.001s. You don't want, like I said before, you don't want to shove your graph into a little space. So, one, two, three, point zero zero four. Okay, that looks good. So, right there from zero to point zero four, that's my period. A point zero zero four. Okay, and on the y axis, the amplitude is four pascals, so I'm just going to count by ones. So one, two, three, four. One, two, three, negative four. All right, so I think we're ready. So basically, um, we need to figure out, well, they told us to use the sine function, right? So if they want us to use sine, what are the things you need? You need three intercepts, one max, and one min. Remember? So we're going to graph the three intercepts. So we're going to have an intercept at zero and an intercept at 0 0.004, the way I taught it. We're going to go to the middle and get the middle intercept now you go between those and do the amplitude, which is four pascals. And you go in the middle of those and go down and that's your graph. So pretty easy. So that would represent, um, well, we should write what it represents because they're asking us, right? What does this stuff represent? Okay, so we have the graph and everything. So what does this represent? All right. So what does the frequency represent? The frequency represents the number of cycles of the sound wave every second. So every second. The sound wave is 250 hertz. All right. The amplitude, what do you think that represents? Well, you might want to read this section so that you know what this represents in the modeling problem. But the amplitude represents the maximum change in air pressure. 
So what you want to do is look up Pascal and see what that means. And then basically that is it's what I told you. The amplitude represents the maximum change in air pressure. The period represents the amount of time that it takes for the sound wave to repeat. So you, you see the arrows, right? So it's going to repeat a cycle after 0 0.004. It will repeat the cycle. Okay, so that's what the frequency, the amplitude, and the period represent in the context of the problem regarding sound waves. I'm going to work one more problem. Um, we're going to have the same direction, so I'm going to erase it, though. In this case, they're going to want us to use cosine. So that's going to be the only difference. So I'm going to erase this because this is going to be different. It's going to be the same directions, but with cosine. And, and they're telling you to use sine or cosine, so you're not having to guess. So they'll tell you. So this is on page 879 also. My order is. Okay, I'm not sure why that's, I'm gonna get some Windex. Go. Okay. Okay. So this next problem B is also a physics problem. Let me read it to you. Use the cosine function. So remember with cosine, you don't have three intercepts. You have two maxes, one min, and two intercepts in that order. So it says use a cosine function to graph a sound wave with a period of 0 0.010. seconds and an amplitude of three pascals note that the recording of the sound wave started when the wave was at its maximum height So that little statement tells you that it doesn't start at zero, zero. So it says, note that the recording of the sound wave started when the wave was at its maximum height. That's cosine. All right. So I think I have everything written down. So the first thing we wanna do is find the frequency which is defined as one over the period. All right, and that's gonna be given in Hertz. So can somebody give me that please? Yeah, 100 Hertz. One hundred hertz. So now I want to do the graph.
All right, we have to figure out how we want to count. So um, we want we have a period of point zero one zero. So we have to figure out how we're going to count. We don't want to squish it in a little space. So we're focused on this. So we want to show one cycle in this amount. <clears throat> we're not used to working with that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put 0 0.005, 0 0.010. So if you double that, you get that. And I'm skipping a tick mark. All right, so that from there to there is going to be our period, which is 0 0.010. I need three Pascals. And now when I draw the curve, I want to start with two maximums. So I'm going to start with a maximum up on three and up on three there. Now I do a minimum. So you go to the middle and put a minimum. And then you go to the middle of these two points and put an intercept and go to those two points. So see how my graph was fairly easy to do because I spread it out. And then you just draw your curve. This goes forever left and right. This, what I'm showing is just one cycle. So that's just one cycle. It goes forever left and right. Okay, now we have to answer the questions. So the frequency represents the number of sound waves every second. So this represents the number of sound waves every second. Amplitude, three Pascals, it represents the maximum change in our air pressure. And the period represents the amount of time it takes for the sound wave to repeat a cycle. So in other words, we see one cycle in a period of 0 0.010 We'll see another cycle in that amount of period again, and that amount of period again, and that amount of period again. But the period is where we see one cycle. All right, that's the lesson for frequency. Anybody have any questions? So probably as you've already figured out, and especially for those of you who've been studying with me, you're not gonna be required to graph with an online test. So they're gonna give you pictures of graph and you have to know how to read them. So you're not graphing it you know, by hand, 